Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest and welcome to another portfolio and technical update video. I am thinking of separating this particular video series into two separate videos. So doing a separate portfolio update video and then also doing a technical update video as well. Uh, this is something I just thought about when I was having a shower after my run. Uh, and I think um, that could be a better way to go. In fact, even the technical update video could be separated into just looking at uh, indices, commodities, uh, bonds, uh, cryptocurrency, that sort of thing. And then potentially just doing standalone videos on individual company charts. So I'm thinking about doing that as well, doing shorter videos if you know what I mean. But anyway, I'm gonna keep it as I always have always been doing it, uh, focusing on the portfolio update first and then getting to the technical update part of the video. And another reason why I'm thinking of separating this particular video into two or at least two separate parts is because of time. A lot of times this particular video is more than one hour long and that's a fair bit of time. Anyway. Let's get up to the portfolio update part of this the video. And everything is going really well at this point in time. A little bit active during the week because I did make four purchases, but no disposals. I actually purchased um, Quantum Intellectual Property, Shape Australia, Cochlear. I did a standalone video on that. And DGL, uh, that chart of that company looks interesting. Uh, the other two, three, uh, Quantum Intellectual Property and Cochlear, they did both release uh, intriguing announcements. Cochlear in the last week, Quantum a few weeks ago, and the chart looks pretty good. Um, and Cochlear share price actually went up another 5 6% on the Friday. We have a look at the charts of all four companies. And Shape Australia chart looks fairly similar to a few companies that I traded about a year ago. We're talking about Doug, Duratech, that sort of thing. Uh, they're in the sort of same sort of space as well. So uh, that was just a pattern recognition trade. Pattern recognition can be fairly important, not only in trading, it's very important in meteorology as well. And I think in all parts of life, pattern recognition can be pretty useful. Now I have thought about uh, putting another column at six months because we are now about seven and a half months into the financial year, but I might leave that um, for another few months anyway. So what I'm doing in this particular slide is looking at the performance of my three portfolios, quality, small caps, and technical, using different strategies, and also three different bet marks, benchmarks, which is the NDQ, which is an ETF, if you like tech. That's probably your favorite uh, uh, ETF. In fact, I would say it's probably the best ETF in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Uh, and if I was um, buying any sort of ETF, it would be the NDQ. Uh, also looking at the XSO, which is the indice, which is the, the ASX small ordinaries, and also the STW, which is an ASX 200 ETF, which if I have a choice of any ETFs, that would not be the one I would be choosing to buy. It would be NDQ, stuff like that. Um, anyway, if we go back to the start of the financial year, we can see that the technical portfolio is simply outperforming all the rest. I have rejigged the constituents of two of my portfolios, small caps and technical. So a few of the companies in my small cap portfolio have been moved to my technical because I went through all my holdings in the small caps and I went, why did I buy or originally buy this company? It was, if it was a technical reason, I put have now put that into the technical portfolio. So technical portfolio up 32% compared to the benchmarks, NDQ, Pretty good performing uh, ETF. And I'd say that's probably the best performing ETF. So um, if I really want to look better, I probably would get rid of the NDQ and just say, well, compared to the XSO up 6% and particularly compared to the STW only up 9%, uh, technical analysis is winning out here. Maybe it's just the way I use technical analysis because I've been told by all the experts, uh, charting does not work, but um, maybe I'm proving that wrong right here. Well. I'm not proving it wrong. I think all those silly experts are silly. Uh, ignorant is probably the best word. Anyway, so NDQ up 20.9. My other two portfolios doing fairly well. Uh, I'm not going to gripe about uh, up 15% for the quality portfolio and 14% for the small caps. And the main thing is both of those portfolios, which only feature 
uh, Australia. Well, the quality portfolio features quite a few um, companies listed on the NSE and the NASDAQ and also on some of the European exchanges as well. So, in fact, I have quite a few international companies in my quality portfolio, but my small caps features just ASX companies. And I was going to say the same thing about my technical portfolio, but that also has Snowflake in it, which is listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Now, if we look at the top, smaller time periods, uh, technical bests performing over the past three months. Uh, and in fact, the other five have all performed fairly similarly. Uh, NDQ 14.9%, probably 13%, the other three between 10 and 11%. The last one month, now we're getting to a little bit more noise. Now, you could probably argue three months is a lot of noise, even six months is a lot of noise. But definitely when you look at one month and one week, a lot of noise here, but NDQ, uh, and if you do have a look at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ is in a beautiful uptrend, uh, bull run right now on the NASDAQ, and that's why in the past month, the NDQ is up 10.2%. Even the past week, the NDQ is up 3.1%. Funnily enough, the XSO and STW, both down in the past week. In fact, negative 0.7 for the STW. And I'm happy to announce that the three portfolios, my three portfolios, all finished in the black. Is that the right word? Black, yeah. Up 2%, quality up 2%, uh, small cap 0.8, and technical 2.4. Now, I won't discuss any more when it comes to the performance of my portfolios. Uh, sometimes in previous videos, I actually went into the makeup and considerance in my portfolios, but uh, that takes a little bit too much time. Now we're going to get to the technical update part of the video. What I'm going to do in the technical update part of the video is I'll go quickly go through the indices, commodities, uh, Bitcoin, and the bonds pretty pretty quickly, I think, because nothing much is happening. Um, in fact, the XGO is going sideways right now, which is understandable because it's at all-time highs. And uh, previously in the past two and a half years when uh, the XJO has got to all-time highs, we have seen a little bit of weakness. So the bears... I wanted to sell right now because all-time highs, but the bulls are saying, "Well, no, the XJO is in and is in possibly a developing uptrend. The Nasdaq is on a beautiful run. The Dow Jones is on a beautiful run. S and P beautiful run. And why can't that translate to the Australian market? Anyway, and nothing much is happening with commodities, although Bitcoin looks pretty good, almost uh, forty-eight thousand. So it looks like Bitcoin has done fairly well in the past week." And then what I'll do is I'll go through the charts of the four companies I purchased during the week, have a look at some other interesting companies, including companies I featured last week, because some of these companies' share price have gone on a run. And then what I might do is have a look at some of the companies that did release uh, financial results in the past few weeks. Uh, so some interesting reactions from the markets there. So let's have a look and start at the indices, the XGO here, uh, going sideways. One of the reasons why the XSO and the STW were down is because if you have a look at the weekly chart, in fact, the XGO was down. Yeah, it was down 0.7%, which makes sense because the STW was down 0.7%. And the XJO and the STW are both ASX 200. So a down week on the Australian markets, which I found interesting. I didn't actually expect that. And the main reason is because on, what was it, Monday and Tuesday, uh, the markets were down pretty big after finishing at the raw time high last Friday. Uh, XSO, a little bit of weakness there, but uh, it is looking much better than it has been for a long time. Uh, potentially has broken above, above uh, resistance there for about 2,930, 40. And that was uh, like, like about a week ago. Uh, but if we look at the American markets, NDQ, which is the, uh, the uh, index, um, these are the index, not the ETF, by the way. Uh, this is, um, yeah, all-time high, beautiful uptrend. This is the very definition of an uptrend. Same thing can be said with the Dow Jones, very definition of an uptrend. Same thing can't be said about the Russell 2000, which is fairly similar than the or to the Australian markets. Uh, for those that don't know, the Russell 2000, well, there's a Russell 3000, uh, which is takes the biggest 3,000 companies from the NS. NYSE, New York Stock Exchange, and the NASDAQ, and the Russell 2000 looks at the smallest 2000 companies in the Russell 3000. So this is a proxy for or a proxy small cap index and looks fairly similar to the XGO and the XSO. No trend, although short-term uptrend um, for the Russell 3000. 
and still had to get through this level right there, around about or just above 2000, um, 2010 or so. Uh, let's have a look at commodities. Nothing too exciting with commodities. As we all know, gold needs to get above 2060 and stay above 2060. Right now, it's at 2020. Last week, it got close again, 2060, but really nothing too exciting right now with gold. I'm still waiting for gold to break out above 2060. And when it does break above 2060 and remain above 2060, I think gold could go on a pretty good run. So make sure you have some gold stocks on your watch lists. I don't. So make sure you do. Just because I don't doesn't mean you can't. Uh, otherwise, I know, yeah, it's uh, actually what I'm going to do is have a look at the weekly charts for these just to see what happened in the week. So, gold down 0.7%, uh, iron ore flat, iron ore flat up a little bit. Uh, uranium, I think, was down. So, I did notice there was one day where Boss Energy was down something like 13%, and that was because one of the mines, the one that starts with C, Kamenko, whatever it's called. Kalamenko uh, announced they were going to increase production or something, which for a short period of time freaked out the market. It was only a short period of time. Uh, oil, I think, had a pretty good week. Yeah, oil up 5.9% after being down 7.4%. So a lot of volatility in oil right now. Lithium, I believe, still going down. Not flat. According to this, lithium was flat. Uh, copper definitely going down for some reason. Copper, not much love in the copper sector right now, down 3.7%. And Newcastle Coal was flat. Let me have a look if that is real. Maybe I'm looking at the, the new week. So Monday, 12th of February. So yeah, that starts 12th of February is tomorrow. So that's a new week there. That's why that's flat. Uh, Newcastle Coal is actually was up 4.8% last week. Then the same, maybe that's the reason why some of these others were flat. No. Lithium uh, week starts at the 5th. What was the other one that was flat? It wasn't gold. Ah, yes. Iron ore. So iron ore was actually flat last week, up 0.02, uh, up 0.7% for the new week. So iron ore must be on a little bit of a tear. In the last day, yeah. So for some reason, we've already got the 12th of February in Trading Views chart, and I know up at 0.7%. So some good times. I didn't realize Trading View did that. Anyway, that's interesting. And copper, if you look at the daily chart for copper, it's gone down six of the past seven days, and that looks fairly bearish, if you had to say anything. Uh, now on to Bitcoin. I mentioned Bitcoin had a really good week. So let's have a look at what happened with Bitcoin up. 12%. Is it started a new week? Yeah, that's a new week. Up. Yeah. Just, just started a new week. So Bitcoin up 12%. Looks at the daily chart. And uh, yeah, it started. This has just started. So this must have happened in the last hour or so because when I, before I started this video, I actually had a look at these uh, um, charts for these. And we did not have this new period for Bitcoin. So it's just turned over to a new day, according to Trading View. But anyway, a really good week for Bitcoin, five up days in a row. And when it closed on Saturday, that was the last trading day in TradingView, uh, it closed at a long-term high. And when I say long-term high, we're talking about last time it was this high or close this high was actually at the start of 2022 or the end of 2021. So we're talking about a two-year high for Bitcoin. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I actually bought some Bitcoin a while ago is because Bitcoin had moved into a nice little uptrend. Um, anyway, uh, yields, yields have rallied and if yields get about 4.4%, that would be maybe a little bit concerning, uh, because, um, I'm not sure why they've rallied, but there's a lot of, a lot of, I heard a lot of commentary in regards to the Fed, uh, being a little bit, little bit, what's the word hawkish or whatever it is. What's the two words? Are dovish and hawkish. Um, anyway. So the, the thinking was uh, the Fed's going to decrease interest rates a fair bit this year. And the Fed's saying, oh, hold your horses. Uh, why? There's no point. We can be patient here. We can be patient because what happened in the 1970s is uh, people don't realize this. A lot of people don't realize this. Uh, inflation wasn't high all through the 70s. It came in waves. And the first time inflation went up, they increased interest rates. And then they decreased interest rates fairly quickly. 
and when um, in, in inflation looked like it was under control and then inflation took off again. And I do think they are a little bit wary about decreasing interest rates too quickly and then we see another flare up in inflation. I definitely believe that's on their minds. Uh, anyway, so that's all I got in regards to commodities, indices, Bitcoin and the bonds. Now let's have a look at individual companies first focusing on the companies I bought during the week. I did a standalone video on Cochlea and I mentioned in that particular video that the breakout for this company, our share price breakout was about 310. I bought below or around $310. I think it might have been 311, uh, the breakout, because I bought at 310. And my thinking was, I believed uh, intuition, uh, pattern recognition, that the share price would rally the next few days. And the share price definitely rallied on the Friday, share price up 6%. Uh, have a look at the five-minute chart uh, with Cochlear. Uh, you can see when Cochlear opened on Thursday, when they released that uh, really good upgrade, the share price opened right where the share price was before that break broker downgrade on the Tuesday. So if the share price got above $311, that would be good news. And the share price opened around about $311. In fact, the high was $311.29. So that's a natural resistance level. That's why there was a little bit of selling coming in. That selling dried up. And then we saw the share price of Cochlear move into a beautiful five-minute uptrend. And that's why I was a little bit bullish. And that's why I took a position at about $310. Uh, because I believe the share price would take off the following day. So things are moving in the right direction for Cochlear. I have done a video on Cochlear in the past, and I did mention I believe Cochlear is a little bit overvalued. Um, PE ratio 66.8, uh, and that belief that this company was overvalued was based off future or past financial performance. And maybe the market is anticipating uh, that these companies' uh, financial performance will accelerate over the next five years or so. And maybe the market is right and I could be wrong. And that's why sometimes you have to be willing to change your viewpoint. Because if I was being a little bit um, stubborn, I probably would have refused to take a position in Cochlear. Now, this trade may not work out. Maybe this is the share price high for Cochlear. But this is another pattern I've been looking for. All-time high, uh, good financial news. Uh, even though we had three broker downgrades in the first month and a bit of the year, potentially now we're going to have broker upgrades. Uh, quantum intellectual property. Now, I was a little bit hesitant about taking or making this trade because shares in this company can be a little bit uh, illiquid at times. Now, they released a good announcement on the 23rd of January. So we're talking about well over two weeks ago. Share price on that day rose 14.7% and it was a breakout. And oh, well, since then, we've just seen the share price go sideways. On a little bit of a dip a few days ago, I took a position. So I think the position was at a dollar and five cents. I can't quite remember. Uh, and I could imagine the share price of this company uh, could start to increase from here. Could, maybe. There's no certainties when you're doing this. But again, this is pattern recognition. Share price, when you're talking about um, last night's share price was this high at around about dollar and seven cents we're talking about i'm not talking about the last few days but we're talking about i'm gonna move my face again over here so we're talking about uh, may 2022 so not quite a two-year high but definitely an 18-month high for quantum intellectual property and that was just based off a good announcement can't remember what the announcement was uh the other company i bought some shares in this week it took a long time for me to get a position shape australia was being patient this is a fairly similar chart than uh, what I saw in a few companies uh, a year ago, 18 months, two years ago, where the share price after they IPO went down, share price stabilized, consolidated, and then we saw the share price break out. Um, I think the time period for this potential breakout is a little bit less than what we saw in those other companies, including Doug. I might be showing you a Doug chart later today, if I'm not. So for instance, Doug, now, Doug is a little bit different because there were some financial concerns about Doug, and then those financial concerns were sort of addressed by comp, by the management. But you can see, and this is a long, see, a much longer time period. So the company, this company, IPO'd well in August two thousand twenty, and then we saw the breakout a few years later, and up she goes, up she goes. Duratech, 
might be a little bit more similar to Shape Australia. But again, I believe this time period is a little bit longer as well. There we have, have it. Uh, so after the IPO, Juratech share price went down and then it stabilized and it broke out in November 2022. Share price has kept on going up since then. Um, and I think there might be a few other companies where I've used a fairly similar pattern when share price has broken out. Now, in both Doug and Juratech, we had seen or did see an increase in volume as well. Now, are we seeing a likewise increase in volume for shape? So let's have a look. And we are. So I'm looking at a breakout in the share price and increasing volume. So look at the volume now on a daily chart and then compare that volume to when the share price was dropping uh, in late 2022, early 2023. Uh, and we didn't see much volume at all. So increase in volume tells me the market likes something with this company. And Shape Australia also released a positive update. I think it was the 18th of January. Share price has gone sideways since then, which is a nice sort of a, like a flag or pennant. You want to see the sideways movement, which tells us that the, the those who want to sell out, who bought in maybe at the IPO, have had the opportunity to sell out, and now the share price can go higher. But since then, really good volume. So I'm pretty confident, pretty confident that I think there's a good chance. Confidence is all about probability. And I think the probability that Shape Australia share price will go higher from here is high in terms of a number to that probability, 70% chance, 70% chance. Uh, anyway, DGL did not release any interesting news. This is just me thinking this could be a shift in sentiment. We saw a potential shift in sentiment back in February, March of last year, but it did not last. Um, and really that's it. So the share price and the sentiment of this company have been in the dumps the last year and a bit. So this could be a turnaround for the comedy just a possible turnaround, some nice little volume coming in in the past few weeks, uh, and the share price had did break out. In fact, it broke out on the 30th of January when the share price went above 88 to 90 cents, and then the share price went sideways the next four trading days, and then the share price started to rally again. So some good volume coming in, and this is just me thinking this could be share price breaking out. Shift in sentiment, uh, company just uh, will release their report, now, this is a New Zealand-based company, so there's a chance they released their financial numbers in March, that sort of thing. Uh, in fact, can we see that? Um, I wonder if they do give any information in training view when they will release the results. Can't see. Anyway, possibly. But anyway, this is just a trade, technical trade. Last time share price was this high. We're talking about uh, July last year, so at least a six-month high. And if the share price can remain above remained above a dollar five cents, which it is now. It is a dollar six cents. Um, so we're talking about uh, a eight month high, nine month high in the share price. And last time share price was this high was when the, the share price went in an absolute tank just before it reached its bottom in June of last year. So a possible shift in sentiment for DGL Group. Anyway, so those are four trades I've made during the week. Now to some interesting charts. Uh, starting with Electro Optic Systems. So I'm pretty sure some of these companies I showed you last week, but the share price of Electro Optics have definitely broken out. Now, my only concern is the share price went on a beautiful run the last two training days, up 12% and 7% in, a, in two days in a row on a really good volume. So we have the volume increasing share price, and that's a really good sign moving forward for Electric Optics. What I want to see now for the share price is no significant drop. I want to see a share price go back down to say a dollar and say the worst case scenario, a dollar 12 cents. That would be really bad. But I don't want to see a share price decrease substantially on a big volume. That would tell me a lot of selling is coming in. Preferably, what I want to see at least the share price go sideways. Now, what I've one of the biggest mistakes I've made in the past when it comes to selling is when I see the share price increase like this. I then sell, thinking the share price might pull back. And what you see is share price just goes sideways. And that's a really good sign. I think I'm pretty sure last week I showed you the chart of Gentrack. That's a beautiful chart to study when it comes to technical analysis. Absolutely beautiful chart. In fact, maybe I should do a standalone video just on Gentrack's chart. Uh, because at one time I did take profits. So I haven't completely sold out of Gentrack. I still hold a position and I'll maintain a hold position in that company for a while yet, unless I see some signs that companies turnaround has come to an end and maybe uh, worse times are in the future. But um, I did sell out because the share price had rallied a fair bit 
I sold to profits, hoping the share price would pull back, then I'll buy back in. And I never bought back in because, uh, or bought more shares uh, because the share price never pulled back. Uh, same thing with um, MMA Offshore. I took profits, complete profits in that company, expecting the pullback. The pullback actually happened, but I did not purchase any shares. So I'm going to show you that chart. So we saw the share price take off here. So this was in the 18th and 19th of December. I took some profits uh, just before Christmas. We did see the pullback. I started January, share price went back down to $1.75 and then, then what happened to the share price. So don't necessarily think the share price has increased like we're seeing with Electra Optics, that that is a time to sell. Now, uh, you can see back in July, we did see sort of a similar takeoff of the share price and share price sort of was volatile after that. Uh, and we didn't see the next high until recently. So that was about a seven month period where the share price languished, not languished, but went sort of sideways. Uh, so a lot of ways to play this with Electro Optics, but the company released a really good Appendix 4C. So a lot of this renewed interest in Electro Optics is simply based off their quality report. And typically, if this sort of reaction is on the back of a good financial report of a profit upgrade, uh, there's going to be a lot of momentum keeping the share price up. So I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, not much of a decrease in share price here for Electro Optics. Now, fairly similar to Electro Optics, we have Drone Shield. Now, I mentioned last week that I did take a trading position in Drone Shield. In fact, initially, it was more of a longer term position. And honestly, it was just a really good financial report. Again, another really good quarterly. But I was thinking, well, this is one good quarterly. The company needs to replicate this quarterly. Now, that company has also released a few other positive announcements since then. And that's why share price has taken off. But look at the volume, really good sustained volume. What the high volume is telling me is institutions are taking positions in Drone Shield. Now, I've known for a while that institutions have been interested in this company, which is a good sign for this company moving forward. Current market cap is $432 million, And the only way you get a company's uh, share price to get or valuation to get this high, like Drone Shield, is increase in institution interest. Apart from companies like Brainchip or even Weebit Nano, who are just driven on retail investor hype, this sort of company that is more than likely will be profitable in financial year 24, more than likely, it's not a guarantee. I think there is that sense that uh, among institutions, particularly small cap institution or fund managers, that this is a beloved company. Now, I do get nervous when I see this sort of chart over a period of time, like a two week, three weeks, uh, but the volume is really high. Now, if we go back to the start of 2023, January, we saw a similar chart. So let's go back, decrease this, decrease my size on my face. So we go back to January last year, we saw a similar, a fairly similar setup here and really good volume coming in. Could even say back in April, May of 2022, similar setup and the share price pullback. So in after January, the share price definitely pulled back. In fact, the share price went from a high of 42 cents down to low of 21 cents in June. So over a six month period, in fact, a five month period, share price halved. Will we see that again? I don't know, no idea. But I always get a little bit wary when I do see this sort of run up in the share price of a company. And on Friday, the share price of Jones Shield increased 20%, well, 19.5%, but near enough to 20% on really big volume. In fact, that volume was the highest we've seen on a up day. Was this an update on the 17th of July? No, it was a down day. No, it was up at 19%. So the highest volume we've seen since 17th of July, 2023, and the second highest um, in the last probably two years or so, maybe all time. Uh, so, yeah, not sure how to play this. So I was on the verge of taking profits last week when the share price was at around about 56 cents. So in the past week, the share price of Drone Shield has increased 21.6% after increasing 40% in the previous week. Anyway, so not sure. Drone Shield up about, I think it's maybe 50% since I bought in. Now, last week, I showed you two companies, two gold companies, uh, Silver Lake Resources 
and Western African uh, because, or West African, because gold was looking interesting at this point and these two companies' charts looked the most interesting. During the week, both companies had negative or negative market responses to news. Silver Lake Resources announced they are thinking about merging with another gold company. I think it's red. The market didn't like that for Silver Lake. Share price on that particular day, I think, decreased maybe 11.5%, decreased another 4.5% on the Friday. So the share price has actually decreased by, in the past week, by, by 15%. So Silver Lake Resources' share price looks no longer bare, bullish. And Western African or West African Resources also released some sort of announcement during the week, and the share price fell 10.6% on the back of that announcement. I forget, was it um, a production up? It wasn't a production update. Uh, I forget what it was. Anyway, so over the week, share price of this company fell 14.9%. So sometimes when a chart does look bullish, the company can release some negative news and that absolutely kills a momentum in the share price and can actually change sentiment on a dime instantly. That's why sometimes on negative announcements, uh, the best thing to do is maybe sell. Maybe. Another company that is on a beautiful run is Hum. Now, this is a beautiful chart. Okay. What's causing this interest? And last time share price was this high. We're talking about uh, 18 months ago. It's just the belief that this is going to be a, one of those buy now, pay later companies, although it's a little bit more than that, that could see um, better financial success in the next few years because of decreasing interest rates. That's all I can think of. But look at the volume. So the share price really started to take off in the middle of December on really big volume. That was a time to think about getting in. The next time to think about getting in when the share price broke above uh, 50 cents. And really, when the share price broke above 50 cents, I'm going to tell you right now, was either the 10th or the 11th of January. Uh, you could have bought in at 52 cents. If I was paying attention, I could have bought at 52 cents. And right now, the share price is 72 cents. And look at the volume. The last, uh, say... Uh, three weeks or so, the volume has really expanded. So some was, someone's becoming interesting. Now, the other thing is, after a really good run-up, share price just kept on increasing day after day, it seems like, maybe over a two to three-week period. We saw a little bit of dip in share price. This is sort of like a pennant or a flag. And those are fairly uh, bearish signals, sort of like a, a pause in the uptrend, a breather in the uptrend. Uh, typically, what you want to see, if I remember correctly, is a decrease in volume during that period. And then when the share price moves out of that panet, that sort of, um, what do you call it? That um, not signal, um, that setup, not the word I want, it's pattern, pattern. Uh, you want to see increased volume. So we saw that in the last two training days, up 6% and then 3% on increasing volume. I would have liked to see higher volume than that, but uh, this is a bullish looking chart for Hum Group after being in a downtrend for quite a while. It started to look pretty good for Hum back in November to January, no, November 2022 to January 2023. It looked pretty good then as well. But this looks like a little bit bullish. Bullish, is that a word? More bullish. Kogan released a good announcement, was it two weeks ago? Uh, and if the share price of Kogan didn't rally back in July of last year, and if this was a multi year high, I would be way more bullish on Kogan right now. But on the back of the good trading update, the market has got interested again. And again, look at the volume. Increase in volume when the company released that positive trading update. Volume has dipped away a little bit. And there is a little, still a little bit of resistance because of those who bought in August, September of last year. Although we're nearly at a six month high for Kogan, almost very close to being a six month high for Kogan. Uh, Q no, GQG. I always get this mixed up. I always want to say QGQ, but this is GQG. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is a fund manager or something like that. I'm going to confirm that. So I'm pretty sure they release um, FUM updates, that sort of thing. Holding individual which engages in the provision of investment services through its subsidiary offers of mutual funds and other structures, including pooled investment vehicles, started on June 2016. Okay. Okay, right, so why do you think I want to show you this chart? So, yeah, so 
this company IPO'd back in October 2021. Share price was fairly weak. Uh, you'd say, wouldn't necessarily say this is a downtrend. Share price sort of going sideways. And all you have to do is just draw a line there. And then the share price broke out in December. We had a test of the breakout. And share price has really rallied after that test. Some good volume coming in the last week or so. Uh, beautiful looking chart for GQG Partners. I've never had a close look at this company before, this fund manager. But for some reason, the market likes GQG Partners. And the share price is at, uh, well, all-time high. Just realize that. GQG Partners is at an all-time high. Congratulations to those who um, are a shareholder in this company, particularly if you bought on that breakout a few weeks ago. On the flip side to QGQ, GQG, we have Latinum Assets. Uh, I wouldn't say this was a beloved asset manager or fund manager in the past, because if you look at the yearly chart, monthly chart, not the yearly chart. Um, so, well, maybe, yeah. Well, would have been beloved back in 2015. Share price went to a high of $9 there. The current share price is $1.08. So you can just see how much the share price of this company has fallen. And the company keeps releasing negative funds under management. They released another negative funds under management on, I believe it was Thursday, and the share price just collapsed. A massive volume coming in as well, perhaps 8.3%. And this is another instance when you might think the share price has gone down a lot, so it looks pretty cheap. And not necessarily so. Catch a falling knife, or what's it? Value trap. So value trap, catch a falling knife scenario. Share price of this company keeps on dropping. I've the really whole reason I put this horizontal line, which was a support line, was because if you know, I thought maybe, maybe if it can bounce off that and never bounced off it again after July two thousand twenty-three, uh, if it bounces off that again, maybe this is a good trade. It looked fairly bullish in January two thousand twenty-three. Look at that. Share price went up to a dollar two dollars and twenty cents. Share price has halved since then. So, and actually, this is another good thing. So the chart for platinum asset management looked really bullish in January, February of last year. This was a potential breakout, and then the company released something really negative on the twenty third of February. Share price closed or went down seventeen percent on that day. And I have heard some experts say, "Well, when the share price drops seventeen percent, you're too late. So no point selling. You're too late. You've missed the boat." Um, tell me, have you missed a boat in this instance? No, that that sort of announcement sh completely shifts sentiment in the company, uh, sentiment in the company, and went from positive, possible positive, some good vibes in this company to no good vibes anymore, bad vibes. And you could have sold not only on that day, you could have waited a few days and sold out at say a dollar ninety cents or so. Share price right now a dollar one dollar and eight cents. So never listen to those people who say, "Well, if the share price goes up twenty percent or falls twenty percent, you missed the boat. You're too late. You're too late." I've heard that a few times in the past. In fact, in the past few weeks. Uh, Megaport. So Mega, I took a position in Megaport on the Penny's Four C. Uh, I wanted it to remain. This was a very similar to a Cochlea where I bought on. Well, I think the share price is going to continue rally. Even though share price went up 27.7%, and there was a nice little resistance level at $12.50, I took a position in this company at $12.50. And the share price has remained just above $12.50 since then. I was at $12.91. I would, and anytime the share price gets to about $12.50, we see some buying coming in. Uh, and the last time the share price was this high at about $13, we are talking about a few years ago. So in fact, we're talking about April 2022. So almost a two-year high for Megaport. And definitely the sentiment in this company is shifting from highly negative two years ago to positive. Uh, Realestate.com. In fact, I'm going to leave Real Estate, REA Group, I mean, to my financial results side of the, part of the video. Tyro, I, this could be a sneaky trade. I'm going to get rid of this line. And I'm going to move this line right here. Oh, did I have to do that? There we go. It continues. So that line continues all the way from this 12th of December 2022. The reason I wanted to have put that line in or extend that line is $1.15 is a really strong level for Tyro payments. 
started started off as a support level, then became resistance, and now it's uh, back to being a resistance level. Um, went, went from sorry, it went from support to resistance to support. Now it's resistance. Share price went to one dollar fifteen cents on the fifteenth of November, and then again on the twentieth of December. And just look in the short term, there is potential if the share price gets above $1.15. This could be a sneaky short-term trade for Tyro Payments. I do have a position in Tyro Payments in my longer-term portfolios, but I am always, always willing to trade this company. Other interesting companies that I just found this morning when I'm just going through some more charts is Fisher & Paykel Healthcare. We saw a little bit of pullback. Share price um, went down to 23.3, right on a support level, or you could say it's testing a resistance level. And it's also this pullback is just a test of this possible now support level. Uh, so a little bit more bullish when it comes to Fisher and Pike. Well, I'd say this is or could be classified as a high quality company. Uh, Zip, really got to have to show you Zip. Well, I don't know why. I didn't look at this chart. I just decided to include zip because look at the chart this is fairly similar to some other charts where the shift in sentiment in this company has been significant really negative uh you know, zip vibes and those zip vibe negative zip vibes have definitely turned positive a little bit more chatter about chatter about zip out there and just by looking at this chart and look at the volume so keep an eye on volume when you see this massive increase in volume that means there is someone in the market getting excited and share price of Zip in the past week rallied, it's a pretty good rally, rallied 30.9%. 30.9%. So I took a position in Zip at 55 cents. Uh, so I was a little bit late in my taking the position. So I was pretty sure it was just after this big up day, 25% on the 7th of December. I thought that was confirmation that sentiment in this company is starting to shift. And I think what we're seeing is further confirmation and that the share price of this company could run significantly further from here. It says the market cap is almost $1 billion. And that seems fairly high. Another one I want to include is AGL Group. Now, the sentiment, I'm pretty sure I showed you AGL Group last week, but AGL Group had moved into a downtrend. And they released something on the 8th of February. Was it half year results or full year results or something? And the market liked it. I had a look at it. It was meh. To me, it was mad, but the market liked it up 10.3%. The reason I wanted to include this company is because someone, I forget where, it could have been on Facebook or somewhere else, said, oh, this is a trading, trade, a potential trade here. And for me, this is definitely not a potential trade. So on that particular day, share price actually closed at the low of the day and the share price plunged, plunged is a, being a bit dramatic, fell another 2.7%. The next day. So why have we seen weakness in AGL share price? And why is this not a trade? Simply because look where our share price was just in the last few weeks. Share price was higher than this the 12th of January. So we're talking about one month ago. So a lot of resistance, a lot of shareholders bought at higher prices. And that's natural resistance. So it's not shocked to see some selling coming in. In fact, if you look at the five minute chart for AGL, you can see the selling coming in straight away. So in the first five minutes, so no for me, no for me at this point in time. Uh, if if the share price starts to move sideways and starts to rally from here, that could be a good sign moving forward. But at this point in time, too much resistance for me to get interested in AGL energy. And how I look at this, it's all about probability. Now, there's a chance that AGL share price could rally from here, but it's about probability. And when you have resistance, uh, the probability of a rally in the share price is actually much lower. So it's all about probability finding those higher probability setups. That's the best way to look at these sort of things. Now on to financial results. So what I've done is in training view, I've set up a new watch list, Feb 24 results. So in the past, what I've done is just write down the companies on a sheet of paper. Write them down, write them down. Whenever there is results, I thought, I don't put it in training view. And that's why I can go through this. So Corvest was the first company to release the results. And they released their results, geez, was it the 18th of January? There's no reason companies can't release their full year, half year results on the second or third day of the trading month. They could re release the results on the second or third of January if they wanted to, but most companies leave it to February. In fact, most companies leave it to the last few days of the month, February. Now, it's not always the company's fault because of auditors. 
they have to get their results audited and some of those auditors could be quite busy. So it could be quite slow process. And that particularly is evident when you're talking about the smaller companies whose auditors leave it to the last second to audit their financial results. Now, I'm going to go through all these results. I think I mentioned Pinnacle last week's video. That still looks interesting. Dexas had a really good update the other day. So a lot of um, REITs released their results in the first week of February. So we have Dexas Region. I think this is a REIT. We also have Centuria Industrial Property or REIT. Uh, NPR, I'm pretty sure that company is going through a takeover right now. Newmark Property and Chapter Charter Hall Long Way or REIT. Mervac Group, which I don't think is a REIT, but just a real estate or property company. Anyway, so a few companies I want to go through here. I mentioned Argyle or Argo last week. I mentioned I did a standalone video on Nick Scali. Uh, I'm not sure if I've mentioned Baylador Technology. I do have an investment in this company. The chart looks actually pretty nice. Uh, Setai, I don't think I did a standalone video on Setai. I probably should, should do it. Excuse me. Had a birthday. I probably should do a standalone video on Setai. This looks pretty bullish. Beautiful results. Uh, share price uh, increased 25% on the day they released their results. This is a bullish, a beautiful uptrend, by the way. So the uptrend started in July 2022 when the share price was, was at 40 cents. You've got to buy this company for 40 cents. And the reason this is a nice uptrend is on these little pullbacks, the share price meets this uptrend, not perfectly. It's not always going to be perfect, perfect but uh, you can see it pulled back in March, pulled back in October pulled back in January, and all those pullback hits the uptrend line. So the most recent pullback was in 16th of January. You could have bought some shares in this company at $2.50. Now it's $4.20. Last time the share price of this company was this high was way back in September. No, we're not far off from an all-time high for this company. So, And the main reason, a lot of this, this uptrend in satire was just based off the potential of this company. Now the company is realizing their potential. Their growth in this company is pretty good. Not the sort of growth you typically see for companies on the ASX. Typically, you see that sort of growth for companies that are listed on the NASDAQ, that sort of thing. So the market is getting interested in this company and understandably so based off the potential. No, not the potential growth, the current growth and the potential growth for this company. Anyway, so I have this company in my small cap portfolio. So 1.6 billion, is it a small cap? Yeah. Wouldn't call this company quite high quality just yet. Uh, this is another, by the way, this is another potential trade. So even though the share price uh, rallied, what was it, 25%, this is still a potential trade because not much selling came in the next few days. Uh, and then all you do is um, if the share price falls below the, the uptrend, that's when you sell. Uh, AMC, no. Dexas, Industrial, Briot, no. AQZ, this was interesting. AQZ, which is Alliance, released their results after trading had finished for the day, which usually is negative. And it looks like the share price went down a little bit. But when you look at this chart, no reason to get excited or pessimistic, but more pessimistic than excited. Uh, Transurban, I have zero interest in these sort of companies. Zero interest in Transurban. Zero. When I say interest, zero interest, I mean zero interest in um, infrastructure companies. I should do a standalone video on RE Group, REA Group just because of the market reaction. If you look at the five-minute chart for RE, REA Group, uh, when the company released their results, instant negative reaction. Share price went down to $176. That was a nice little support level. Share price tested that level three times in the next, well, that day. On Thursday, it tested it three times. It failed. Uh, pretty big volume coming in. And then share price rallied the next day. And now the share price is higher than it was the day before the company released the results. Not sure what caused that negative reaction. And the market was wrong. So the way I look at this, the market was pessimistic or negative. The market sold off. The market was wrong. And look at that nice rise in share price. So this is a really interesting technical study, maybe. So anyway, I'll do a video on that company. In fact, this um, level, 
important level uh, goes all the way back to their highs back in November 2021, which was their all-time high. Share price right now for REA Group, REA Group is an all-time high. I actually did a video on REA Group. Probably shouldn't say this yet. Maybe I should say this in the standalone video. I did a video on REA Group sometime in 2021 just saying, is this company overvalued? I sold my shares because I had a holding in that company for nine years. I thought, oh, they're overvalued. And then share price went down. And then I bought back in in early 2023 when the share price, I forget what share price was. And this is something I always hear from experts again who say don't sell because if you sell you'll never buy back in it's complete hogwash if you refuse to buy back in of a company you've sold you probably don't belong investing in individual companies just stay in index funds that sort of thing um because if you are so emotionally involved that you can't buy back in a company you've sold that actually is a significant problem I have zero problem buying back in companies I've sold. In fact, numerous times I've sold a company and then bought back in the next day or so. Sometimes I realize I've made a mistake. Anyway, so don't be fearful of buying back in a company you've sold. And just don't listen to those who say you should never sell companies because if you sell, you won't buy back in. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. A company I probably would never buy it. Why is News Corp? Now, this is really interesting. So News Corp and REA Group released the results almost exactly the same time, which is understandable because News Group, um, the, one of their biggest investments is REA Group. And it was really interesting because News Corp uh, share price rallied 6% on the day while REA Group went down, which is interesting because when you look at the News Corp investments or the News Corp company itself, their best investment is REA Group, uh, without doubt. Look at this chart. Uh, I don't know why the market is bullish about this company. I think this is a low quality company, uh, but maybe I'm wrong. And this is a case where just focus on the chart. And if I just focus on the chart, I could have bought um, News Corp at around $30 or so. And the share price has increased 33% or greater than 33% since then. So sometimes I should just set aside my biases in regards to companies and I probably would perform better. When it comes to technical analysis, now I don't still don't think News Corp is a long-term hold. It's not a quality company. Just my opinion. I think I've already talked about AGL Group. Uh, oh, Boral. So last company I want to talk about is Boral. Probably should do a, do a standalone video on this company as well because nice looking chart. This is a beautiful chart, and they released their results. Share price increased eight point three percent. Is this a sneaky? trading possibility i think it is last time share price was this time was way back in the start of 2022 so we're talking about two year high a lot of positive sentiment in this company they've released a couple of positive uh, results or news announcements or uh, financial announcements recently the last one i believe was in november share price went up five percent on that day uh, and you could have bought in on that day at or below five dollars share price now is 586 so share price has almost increased 20% from there. So possible trade. The other thing I've got to do more is uh, not or stop overthinking things. Uh, when a company releases a result like this, positive financial results, share price breaking out, um, con continues in its uptrend, some good value coming in, look at the volume, nice volume coming in. Uh, that's probably a no brainer. It can, it's just my biases against individual companies. And I'm not that high on Boral overall as a long-term position. That's why I've got to overcome my biases because Boral is, in my opinion, not a long-term company. And to confirm that, look at the one-month chart. So you might look at that uh, daily chart and think, wow, look at the uptrend in share price. Share price of this company has been significantly high in the past. In fact, in 2006 or seven, share price of Boral almost reached $10. So this is more of a trading company. And times are good for Boral. Anyway, and the last company I have here is Connection, which is a really small company, but it's profitable. But illiquidly traded and share price 2.1 cents. Markup $19 million. They had revenue in 2023 of $10 million and a profit of 2.6. So high margins there. High not margins, yeah. 
net margins. Anyway, that's it for this video. Have a good day. And don't forget, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for the video. Have a good day. Bye.